He is the true number one contender in the bantamweight division, and we expect him to fight for that 135-pound title later this year. It is always my pleasure to speak to, should I call it Miami Marab? Is it just Miami Marab now? Marab, Mexican Marab? What is it now? Marab Duel is really, what's the official nickname now? You can call me all, just because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a people's fighter, you know? <laughs> the, no problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta ask. I, I I gotta ask you with the with the Cejudo fight, you embraced the the Mexican people, and then you went down to Mexico City. Did you imagine you get that kind of ovation? Like they went crazy for you down there. For sure. Thank you, all the Mexican people who give me love and support. I always uh, love Mexican people in the country, Mexico. Uh, especially they are very patriot and uh, they tough warrior people. And uh, yeah, now like I, <laughs> I got so much support and love from them, and so it's a big honor for for, for me. And uh, I gotta make sure represent Mexico very good. You know? I love it. I love it. So Mirab, of course, the reason we're talking, you know, we know what happened this past weekend. Um, of course, as I mentioned, you are the number one contender in the division. You were there. What did you think of, of Sean O'Malley's win over Cheeto Vera? You were sitting right there front and center. What did you think of that performance? Uh, it was an impressive fight. Uh, he did very good against Cheeto Vera. He won all five rounds. And uh, very good. Very good, fi- very good fight. And O'Malley's a good fighter. That's why I want to fight against him. You know, I want to challenge myself since 2018. And... Uh, now it's perfect time. It's, it's happening right time. You know, I always want to fight him, but now I think this is the best time. It was worth it. And now it's, there is no questions. It, this is the, it's going to be biggest fight, you know. I mean, in my, my, our weight class right now, right um, this time, this will be a very big fight because, uh, you know, all MMA people know me very well and I beat three former champions and... Uh, uh, now Mali is champion, so it's gonna be a great fight, and I think the stylistically good fight in you know, striker versus grappler, and uh, let's see, let's see if I can knock him out in striking. So let's see. <laughs> I obviously, you know, you were there watching the fight. You were in the front row. I know. I'm sure you saw, or maybe you heard. Of course, your friend and teammate Aljamain Sterling talked about the fight. And he said, you know, it, it, something to the effect of he couldn't be that impressed because he kind of. You know, it was a tailor-made matchup for, 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 you know, O'Malley. And even O'Malley said, you know, no one said that Cheeto deserved the shot. He got gifted a title shot, which we all know why he got it. So, I mean, were you impressed or do you feel like it played out pretty much the way it, you expected it to play out? The fact that he should not fight uh, Cheeto because of Cheeto don't deserve, that is the fact. But, yeah, I was supposed to fight him, uh, but... Uh, that's, uh, I mean, uh, okay, we all know about this, but now let's move on. You know, I don't want to keep talking about this. So he fight, and then also uh, Chito Vera or any other fighter, even if they put against them somebody from debut, everybody has a chance, you know. But O'Malley did his thing, you know, respect. He made weight, he fought hard, he showed highlight, he beat up Chito and dominate. And then, so now he defends his belt. Um, uh, it, it, I mean, I, I give him respect. You know, Mal is a good fighter. You know, he, we all see he was, he made it look easy, you know. Even it doesn't matter, you know, doesn't matter uh, against who, you know, he, you know, he won and he's, uh, I don't know how I should say. You know, I did give him respect even he beat Chito Vera and Chito Vera is not, yeah. Number one can't, he's not, but I still give him a lot of, lots of respect. And uh, now it's just, I don't care. I don't care. I just, my, my title fight. You know? and like, come on, guys, give me title fight. <laughs> Please, somebody has to come from this. You know, I'm fighting for the belt. I don't care. Just, I want to fight. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I ask for that? Like, because we saw they had you recorded, you know, after the fight ended. And, and, you know, immediately after, you know, he's talking and he says, give me the plane to Spain. And everyone kind of kind of groaned at that a little bit because I think we all expect, you know, call out Marab. Marab's the number one contender. 
Uh, and you, I, I saw the video. You did not look happy that he just wouldn't. He just refused to mention your name. Exactly. Yeah, I was there, and um, I was um, uh, rooting for O'Malley, you know, because I want to fight him. And uh, and then he called really, and I know this fight's not gonna happen. And he's still not mentioning my name, and then he's still. I don't know, I don't want to say ducking me or something, but come on, bro, let's build this fight, you know? We're going to fight and let's build this fight and let's make it even bigger, you know? Why not? Why? I don't understand why you, why you are champion. Okay, before I understand, like, he wasn't fighting top 15 guys, you know, he was fighting out, uh, outside the rank, and then only the top guy he fought, Peter Jan, um, you know, we all know that was close fight, and uh, and then they give give to him Aljo, short notice for Aljo, and uh, he got lucky. Now, come on, like, now give, give division respect. You know, class, you got to fight, like, uh, the best of the best. You know, you got to fight the number one contenders, you know, especially I'm here waiting, you know. And, um, yeah, he, yeah, he, that, I was so pissed, you know, but now I'm one. I don't care, you know, I just ask. Uh, I'm good. I'm not just, I was just mad, but now, I, as long as long as he's gonna fight me, I'll be I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Tell me tell me about that backstage interaction real quick because you kind of ran into him backstage. And O'Malley said yesterday he said you know he was kind of messing with you like he knew who you were. He was just kind of messing with you. But like it was funny you ran into him backstage. He was like hobbling back on the on the crutches and everything, and you kind of ran into it. What what was that? What was that like? Yeah, let me tell you a whole thing. So I they are watching fights. Of course, I want to O'Malley win the, because I want to, to fight the superstar, the, the champion, the O'Malley. I want to challenge myself. And I'm there, and uh, O'Malley wins, and then he may call out, but he don't call me out. I'm like, I was so mad. Like, come on, like, come on, O'Malley, bro. Like, uh, and then especially he's talking about he's going to knock me out. And then please don't fight me and knock me out. Like, bro, the wall, let's fight. You know, if you say wall, you're going to knock me out. And you talk, you make fun of my nose. You know, who cares my nose? It's a fight. You know, it's a skill and fight and, you know, challenge and everything. But anyways, so, yeah, I was mad. And then and, 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 and I, I, I moved to backstage. And then he's coming. And then I move on. You know, I want to say, shake his hand and I say congratulations to him. And then, and then when I, I uh, touch his hand and I said congratulations, bro. And then he kind of ignored me like since the beginning. You know, like he don't even look me. And I, and then that's again like I'm mad again. Like listen, look me and shake my hand. Like you know, he don't even shake my hand. Some good, you know. And then I I did mention, hey, bro, you should you should mention my name. And then. And then he's like, oh, oh, I don't, I don't even know who he was. And I was mad at him. I'm like, bro, come on, like you don't even know who I am. What the heck? And then yeah, that was, that was. But like he up there, like I watch interviews, his interviews yesterday, like um, with that couple, like uh, media, and then he didn't mention my name. And he's, but yeah, I think that you know, I don't care. He's mentioned my name or no. Uh, UFC knows I'm the next, and the UFC not gonna let him just go somewhere. He he just defend his belt, you know. And uh, yeah, and it's like it's not like a like stupid video game. It's a it's a UFC, and they come out. We gotta respect this company. We gotta respect the people, and uh, we gotta give people what they want, you know. Absolutely. I know your your guy Ilya, of course, who you were rooting for to, to become the the first Georgian champion. You want to become the the second Georgian champion. Even he said, you know, good good job on your win. Now go fight Murad. Like even he has your back. Like saying, go fight Murad. That's the fight that should happen. Exactly. He's the man. He's the real real guy, and he's uh, he's he's a real champion. So that's how champions should be. You know, the be man, be real champion. That's it. Yeah, it seems like the entire world is on your side, Murad, because, like, before the Cejudo fight, like, there were people who, who wanted to see the Cheeto fight just because he had the win over Sean, and I get all that. But then you go out and do what you did to Cejudo. You had that great moment with Zuckerberg. You had the crowd on your side. 
have you felt that? Like, it felt like the entire world now is behind you getting this title shot. Like, even even Sean said before his fight, like, when he mentioned Ilya and everyone's like, no, fight Marab. You got to go fight Marab. It seems like the entire world is on your side now. Like, no one is calling for the Ilya Taporia fight. Everyone wants to see you and Sean O'Malley. Like, he seems to be the only one resisting it. Yes, absolutely right. Um, yeah, then I want to tell all my friends, all MMA fans, and everyone, thank you so much for all the support. And they really see hard work, and they really are behind uh, with the hardworking guy. I'm a hardworking guy. Maybe I'm not a, yeah, maybe I'm not <laughs> like a, uh, like a, I don't know how I should say. I'm not maybe a superstar like O'Malley, but I'm I'm just working hard. And, you know, I have a 12 fights in UFC, and I should be 12 and no. You know, I got robbed in first two fights. And uh, if you guys go and watch my first two fights in UFC, I win those fights, but I uh, move on. Like now, and I am just focus on uh, winning and fighting, and I put all my hard work and dedication to this sport because I love it. And... Uh, and I, and I see, of course, so much support, and I feel the support everywhere I go. Everybody giving me good energy, and of course, uh, I'm going to give people back good fights and good energy, and uh, I, I'll be appreciated all my life for all these people who support me. Absolutely. I do, a, I do a podcast with Matt Brown, of course, UFC welterweight Matt Brown, and before the fight, you know, we both kind of agreed. We said, listen, we like Cheeto, nice guy, but, you know, Marab should have been in there. And he had a great quote. I don't know, maybe you saw it. He said, uh, they're trying to squeeze all the juice out of Sean O'Malley before Marab gets there and empties that cup out. So I think a lot of people, I mean, you saw the odds. Like, you are the odds-on favorite to beat O'Malley. Like, do you feel like this is just like O'Malley's got to enjoy it while he can because once he faces you, the O'Malley hype train kind of comes to an end. Yes, and I agree. And I did see you guys' podcast, and thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I see Matt Brown's uh, little clip interview, too. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. And this really means a lot for me. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I come from a uh, small country, and I come from a small village uh, from Georgia. And uh, uh, the hard work got me here, and uh, I'm so grateful, and I'm so happy. And, uh, yeah, I'm just blessed, and uh, I appreciate you guys because without you guys and your, your support, uh, it's not going to happen. But and I'm, I'm, I'm happy you guys see all the hard work, and you guys appreciate all this good work. Absolutely. Now, I saw you post on, on Instagram, Rab. You already said, hey, you're down. I know O'Malley said the Sphere in September would be a perfect date. That's going to be a massive card. We all obviously know that. Uh, can I imagine whether it's August, September, October, whatever date it is, like you're ready for whatever date they give you. September would be great, but is it pretty much like just give me a date and I'm there? You know, uh, of course I, I'm I'm ready. You know, I'm ready. Even you see, like I just I was ready last Saturday. You know, and I made weight, and if one of the guy pull out or don't make weight, you guys see the Chito where hardly make weight. You know. And uh, if they need me, I was there. I was ready for fight. You know, of course, like any any day in June, July, August, September, October, November, I don't care. I can't wait. No problem. Omali take can he can take all his time and he can just keep training uh, whatever he wants. <laughs> uh, the yeah, and then when he decides to come back, I'm I'm ready for fight to the champion. Now I know you you you're out in Vegas, Marab. Have you been to the Sphere yet? Uh, I drive. I I was there, but not not inside. I never been inside, but of course outside. Uh, I I yeah, I did. I, I love this place. Yeah, it's very cool. It would be a cool one to headline, right? Like I know it's a big card. I know it's going to be you know Mexican Independence Day. I think they're going to do Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso there. You know that's a, a flyweight title fight. I think it'd be cool to headline it with you and O'Malley. Like what a big card that would be. Two title fights right at the top. That would be great. I would love to fight there and especially in Mexico's independent day and that would be like a history. So at this point like no matter what else is being said do you believe in your heart of hearts the UFC will give you this title shot? I did believe this yeah I mean I'm I'm the number one contender fight this division and uh, 
Omar just defend his belt and now he has to fight me. You know, it's it's way too early. Go somewhere, and especially with this performance, you know, uh, against number six guy, it wasn't knockout or something. He don't even clean the, this division. I'm here. Corey Sanhagen is here, you know, and then you know he has to fight the 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 guys here. You know, like how he's gonna disrespect everybody. You know, like. Come on, then he has to be a real champion, you know, like, and so, yeah, yeah, of course, I think, uh, yeah, I did see Dana, and then he did uh, say something to me, I believe, uh, you know, I, I just say hello to him, and I think he did say, you are next, or something like this, you know, I, you know many people there, and uh, yeah, he did tell me something like this, you know, and, um, yeah, I mean, Dana White say, you know, to the press conference after my fight, yeah, I'm the next. And uh, I mean, all like you said, all, all world wants to see me fight against Omali. And uh, uh, this fight has to happen, you know. This is it's gonna be big, huge fight, you know. Doesn't matter. I would love to fight um, uh, UFC Noche, you know, Mexican in Mexico's Independence Day at at, at, at spare space, but you know, at, at Vegas here, but um. If it's not, uh, we can fight anywhere, you know, in the U.S., it's going to be a huge fight, you know, like, even if we fight New York, that would be huge, uh, like, you know, New York is my second home, you know, I have so many friends, family members, and Georgian community there, all the Long Island community there, my team is there, and, uh, like, it's going to be huge, New York, I never fought in New York, New York, Fight New York was my dream, and the fight of Mali was my dream. So, <laughs> and if it's, it's gonna happen, that would be good. And especially the first title, title fight is, of course, like every UFC fight there is goal. And this is only one left for me to fight the fight title. And then I'm not gonna only fight, I'm going to win this fight and title. I can't wait. I think it's going to happen. Like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. They just got to give me the date, give me the location, and, and I can't wait for it to happen. Before I let you go, Marab, obviously you were there front row. You'd wait in that week. You were there, you know, for the fight. But I'm curious, your last opponent, but two fights ago, you fought and beat Piotr Jan pretty dominantly in that fight. I know you were not the biggest fan of Piotr Jan going into that fight, but what did you think his performance on on Saturday? Were you were you were you in a weird like were you happy to see him get back on track? I mean, you know, he was on a bit of a streak, and you had beaten him pretty dominantly when you beat him, and and you know you beat him in a way that no one had beaten him. Like you beat him in a way that even obviously a tons of respect for your teammate Aljamain, but even Aljamain didn't do that to to Peter. Actually, I was so happy for Peter, and I was rooting to him in the all all fight. I was like Aries, you know. In the beginning, he started a little slow, and Song Gido was throwing bombs, and when he came back second round, that third round, and I take him down, <laughs> finish on top, and I was so happy for Peter. Yeah, the only problem I know with Peter, he's a little bit cocky, and he's disrespect other fighters, and he's, you know, he has to be humble, you know. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, you know, like, you know, of course, like, I'm rooting the guys who I, who I fought with, and, uh, you know, and, yeah, I was, it's crazy, I was... Rooting for Peter, I was rooting for Omali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guys. Peter, Peter has to work on his humble, humble, humbleness, or whatever you want to say. And then Omali, he's all right, you know. But you know, uh, like, so yeah, I, I talked Aljo today, and then he, he was also mad, you know, because I give Omali chance, uh, you know, and especially when I was champion and I was ready for go vacation. And then they told me, and I did give him chance. Now he don't want to give you a chance, or he's just running away, making some excuses. And then, like, yeah, like, just be like, uh, just be like a man and be like a good champion. So, so I'm happy for uh, Peter. He got the win, and uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think I even. I. I know I didn't talk to you right after the fight, Marab, because I was waiting until after O'Malley fogs. I wanted to be able to talk about that. I'm sure you saw, of course, Henry Cejudo said he's not retiring. He's going to stay fighting. Uh, can I imagine you're happy to see him back as well? Like, I'm sure you'll be rooting for Henry to do well. 100%. He, he, 
they ask me same question after my fight. What do you think Henry should retire? No, that's up to him. And I'm happy he's staying and he's going to continue to fight. Listen, we are fighters. That's what makes us happy. And that's, this is our life. We enjoy, and especially we are fighting in UFC, the best organization in the world. And uh, this is really not easy. This is really hard. We're going through lots of uh, things, you know, motion, like, like, like physically or mentally. But this is... This is our life, and you know that's you. You got if you this if fighting makes you happy. Just you know, nobody, nobody can tell us to we can fight or no. You know, just as long as we are healthy and medically clear, we should fight. And uh, and I'm happy for him. He's staying fighting, and it's up to him. And uh, yeah, I wish him all the best. And uh, yeah, he's a good guy. You know, he just likes to make, give us nickname, make some fun of us. But I have so much respect for uh, Henry Cejudo. You know, like uh, uh, after Josie Aldo, I give him most, 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 most respects to my opponents. Yeah, well, I, I said, you know, maybe it's Miami Marab. I think when you go out and beat Sean O'Malley and become champion, I think we're going to have to start calling you Maserati Marab. You're going to go buy that new car with the title belt. You know, we'll start calling you Maserati Marab. How about that? Thank you. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> Now, are you, are you, are you, obviously you were, you were out, you were out in Miami for the fights. Are you back in Vegas? I assume you're going to be with Aljo because obviously he's got his fight coming up in a month. I assume you'll be out there in his camp helping him get ready. Yes, exactly. I did come here in Las Vegas to uh, help him to preparation, whatever he needs. You know, he needs corner or if he needs any, any training, whatever, I'll be with him for this next month. And, uh, yeah, I'm here now, I guess, and uh, and uh, after I'll just fight, I will go for just a little bit, couple of days in my country, see my people, like get good energy, uh, and uh, I will come back again, to Vegas, and continue hard work, and I'll be ready. And whenever they give me, like you guys see, you know, they they give me, like they told me in one week, you wanna be backup fighter. I said, of course, of course, I wanna be backup fighter. Of course, I wanna take the challenge. Of course, I want to be ready, and uh, of course, if something happened, I will fight. You know, even even that wasn't best uh, business decision for me. I'm, I'm I believe myself, and um, I I did because I don't want to make excuses for myself. Forever, I'm a fighter, and then for of course for the belt and for the people, I'll be ready anytime. You have to give me dates. I'll be ready. Absolutely. I know you're technically not fighting at UFC 300, but from what I hear and from what I know, you and Aljamain will have like a three-round fight in the back before he actually walks out there. So you're kind of fighting at UFC 300, right? You know, I can't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need footage of the sparring session backstage, Brad, when you and Aljo get into a full-on fight before the fight. I feel like we need that. We need footage of that in the future. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I... Maybe we will film, but we I will send you only you, but, and then we're going to make public after we retire. We're going to make our spot as public. I, I'm I love that. it. Yes. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Well, Murad, again, uh, thank you for the time. Obviously, hopefully next time we talk, the fight is booked. I mean, I think it's going to happen. It's just a matter of, like, what the date's going to be. Is it going to be August, September, whatever the date's going to be? So I can't wait to see it. Thank you, as always, for the time. And uh, like I said, next time we chat, we'll be talking about the actual fight with Sean O'Malley, and then you can officially adopt that nickname I gave you, Maserati Murad. Thank you, Damon. Always great time. With you and thank you for having me. The best of luck. Absolutely. We'll talk soon, okay? I talk to you, man. Bye.